morning and welcome. Oh, goodness. Okay, we're on. Good morning and welcome to West Prairie. Uh, as we begin, I want to let you all know that there's no right way to do funerals. and There's no right way to grieve. But the best way we have found out is by coming together in the name of Jesus and in the memory of those who we love. And this time it's Don, who uh, he fit a lot of personality under that cowboy hat of his. And uh, he also fit a lot of love into his community, as we could see here today. And it's a pretty neat ceremony that we're going to have. There's at least three pastors in attendance. Uh, we have some beautiful music and uh, a lot of good Jesus words to talk about because we know Jesus was one of Don's best friends. Uh, so I invite you all to please stand as you are able. And I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our brother Don, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We will now begin by singing the gathering hymn number 817 in the Red Book, You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore.
God of grace and glory, we remember the Lord Jesus today. Good morning. <clears throat> my name is Marlon Fjellen. I'm from Oak Clark, South Dakota. Um, my wife Joyce and I uh, have been privileged to uh, count Don and Helen as longtime personal friends. Uh, we have also had We, uh, there we are. Uh, we have also had a long time affiliation together in the South Dakota Auctioneers Association. Uh, <clears throat> Helen and I uh, have common bonds uh, through Augustana Academy at Canton, and Don and I have had a long time association with regional and state rural water uh, uh, programs. Don's family asked me to express a few thoughts personally and as a member of the South Dakota Auctioneers Association. It's a privilege to be here in this capacity. <clears throat> I knew Don had many associations in France, but last evening when Joyce and I turned at the top of exit 62, uh, coming over to your church here at West Prairie, uh, we saw all the cars. I wondered really what I got involved in, because it looked a lot like a Minnesota Vikings exhibition game crowd. Uh, <laughs> there were a lot of cars. Um, but anyhow, I'm very honored to be here. Uh, what a testimony to a life well lived to have half the population of South Dakota and areas beyond come to your visitation. <clears throat> Don was a charter member of the South Dakota Auctioneers Association. He held every office at one time or another. He and Helen attended every state convention for many, many years, uh, and he served as our resident chaplain provided invocation at major events uh, until his health had declined. Uh, incidentally, uh, Don and Helen came to my wife Joyce and my 50th wedding anniversary up at Clark in, uh, I think, uh, what was that, 2015, Joyce, um, and he did the invocation there, and uh, so far she's decided to try another few years. <coughs> Don's auction chant uh, and popular selection as a People's Choice Award uh, winner at our state convention was a real honor. Um, John, John assisted his dad to the stage during the State Fair Bid Calling Championship just two years ago, and uh, Don uh, chanted and wowed the crowd uh, with his humor. Um, it was a very extreme privilege to be there. An ultimate recognition of Don Sweeter as an exemplary person and auctioneer was when he was inducted into the South Dakota Auctioneers Association Hall of Fame in 2004. Uh, last night and today uh, he is being inducted into your Friendship Hall of Fame and uh, I know that the family appreciates your attendance and being here. We all remember Don uh, as, being, um, as being very honest um, he uh, would also offer honest critique, and I can often remember what he said when you do an auction, don't point at that person's eyes, you encourage them to bid, don't coerce them to bid. So he was that kind of a mentor, and I'm sure he was to many of you too. Um, <clears throat> as a teacher, 
uh, as an example for all of us when it comes to honesty, integrity, and dedication, Don is an exemplary example for all of us. And from all, this is hard for me to do, but from all 150 members of the South Dakota Auctioneers Association, Don, we say goodbye and we will always remember you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Chelsea. I'm Don's oldest grandchild. And um, I just want to say a couple things today. Uh, Grandma had asked all of us grandkids if we uh, want to share some memories. I thought this would be a little bit easier, but it's not. And, um, you know, just talking the last few days with my cousins and... And a lot of the memories were um, some that got brought up. We were all riding in the back of his pickup, and we were jamming out some music. Grandpa had his hat on sideways, and his music's blaring, and all the grandkids are back in there. When we were sledding behind his pickup, just some of those memories. Or he'd always always had his hat sideways and being just goofy and silly with us. Um, but the memory that really sticks out to me is um, last spring. We, I had some cattle with them for a few years, and last spring we sold our last pair. And when our pair was in the ring, the auctioneer announced our name and knew Grandpa well, as everyone would. He auctioned quite a bit. And kind of joked with him, like, you know, is this actually your last pair? Are you going to come back next week and buy some more? And um, so we auctioned, but before we auctioned off, he gave said some really nice things about Grandpa and... Gave, the whole crowd gave a round of applause for him, and it was just really neat to have that moment with Grandpa. And now to be able to help my dad farm and farm the same ground that my dad, Grandpa is or had. And, um, you know, I just want to thank everyone for being here, and it means a lot to my Grandpa and to everybody else um, to share those moments with him. Thank you. These things are always too low for me, as they probably were for Don, too. I'm Andrew, um, his, one of his three grandsons, uh, and I just want to say some words uh, today, too. It is during moments like today, in the wake of losing someone that we love, that we are reminded of the fragility of life. We are forced to recall that life is fleeting and temporary, and it can scare us or make us uncomfortable to think about. After all, it would be far easier and more convenient to believe we might each live forever. But as hard a truth as it may be, life is fragile. And when it comes to those we care for deeply, even a long life seems too short. And yet, I believe that this fragility is what makes life precious. If life went on forever, we would have an infinite amount of time to mess up, to live carelessly, or without any purpose. But it does not. And we, therefore, must learn quickly to cherish it and not take what we have for granted. So, yes, our lives are tangible. But for that reason, the choices we make while here become ever more important. The smiles we spread, the work we do on behalf of others, and the character we build and present on a daily basis make a real difference. And if you need any evidence that this is true, just look at the impact that one man could make in all of our lives. Just look at how many people are gathered here today on his behalf. What a living testament to his memory. Don Sweeter was well aware that life was hard, but he always chose to stand up straight and to meet it head on. He made friends easily, and he kept them forever. Credit this to his good looks, his bright smile, and his eagerness to extend himself on behalf of others in their need. He married a woman whom he loved dearly from the moment they met until the end of his days. And he had three children and seven grandchildren who followed in his footsteps of being hard workers, 
and all of them properly stubborn at times too. Nearly every Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving was spent with his family, and that doesn't even include the countless summer nights with grandkids staying over or the evenings lighting fireworks in the fields on the 4th of July or the many auction days where his cowboy hat, boots, and rich and strong voice would captivate an audience. His life, his life which nothing was, uh, his life was one full to the top with joy and love, and one in which nothing was left on the table. A few years ago, as we were preparing to leave after a family meal on the farm, he pulled me aside and told me something that was so profound that I wrote it down and saved it because I knew it would come in handy on a day like today. He said, and I'm quoting, you guys are the best I've got. Money, land, cattle. Those are just games I play. You all are what matters most to me. So while today is a sad day, and while it is okay to feel sadness on his behalf, I implore you to remember Don's example and to live your own lives in a similar way. I hope that I too have the strength, courage, and grit to be half the man that he always was, because people like him make this world a place worth living in. If this is truly a day for Don Sweeter, then let us ask ourselves what he would want. Would he want us to wallow in our sadness or to pity him? No. Did he not live each day with intent and with strength? His kindness wasn't accidental. It was intentional, unselfish, and genuine. To be the man he was required a fount of energy that ten men together could not muster on their best day. But to see how happy he was in carrying on his way, you would simply have no idea that it took any effort at all. Even in death, Don is no man to be pitied. He knew that life is precarious, but he was also a shining example that it is not an ornamental thing to be put on a shelf, polished, and kept safe. Rather, life is something to be dragged through the mud, to be hardened, tampered with, and tested. That is where the true quality of life emerges, and that is the manner in which he showed us all his virtue. He knew of the fragility of life, but he also knew what made it worth living. And that was all of you. Thank you. When I came to West Prairie in 2005, it was a very vulnerable time in my life, and um, I had some qualms about coming here to be a pastor while I was caring for my parents who were in very um, tough shape. And, and one of the reasons that I did take the call after being an interim here for a few months was that Don had promised to protect me. Um, and I felt that protection and that support through the seven years that I was here as well as a wonderful and supportive friendship and partnership with Helen. So it's fitting that the two songs that I was asked to sing are about uh, Jesus the Good Shepherd, because I do think that Don lived out his life as someone who kind of took on also that shepherd role of a protector and a supporter. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us. For your use our fold prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. We are yours in love, befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep our 
flock from thin defenders. Gaze us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. You have promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. You have mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Early let us seek Your favor, early let us to Your Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved The first reading is from the 91st Psalm, <clears throat> beginning at the first verse. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in the darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver, I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading from the book of Revelation, the second chapter, beginning at verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander on the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have affliction. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. 
Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. And the lesson from the Gospel, Matthew 6, beginning at verse 25. If you are able, please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink? What will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive for the first for the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God remains forever. Please be seated. The Lord God is totally trustworthy. He really and truly, thoroughly cares for his people each and every day. And this is most comforting words and very good news because right in the middle of that word, life and of life itself, is one big if. The content of the coming days remains uncertain. Nevertheless, God holds tomorrow, and he holds us in his loving care. And this text from the Gospel of Matthew calls us to trust God one day at a time. Our Heavenly Father supplies all we need as it is needed. He cares. He cares for time, and He cares all through eternity. How well we know that uncertainties are a part of human existence. The unknown, the unforeseen, the unexpected always have ways of making their presence known. Change really is the only constant. We think of your loved one and our good friend Don and his 89 years. Well, as almost he was 89, but he felt more he wanted to be 90. Remember that? He said as soon as he turned 89, he said, I'm 89 in one day. So he was, he was more into that 90 stuff because he was really looking forward to that birthday. So we'll say Don's almost 90 years spanned an era of uncertainty. There was the dirty 30s, the Great Depression. There was the horrific Second World War. There was the dawn of the nuclear age with immense destructive power held in human hands. There was the advent of space travel boldly going where no one had gone before. And it just seems like that uncertainty gets more and more intense. For what is cutting edge today is really obsolete tomorrow. What is modern now will be out of style in another week. The more we know, the more we don't know. And so one solution always brings a whole new set of problems. So it is in this uncertain life and in this uncertain world that we hear the words today from Matthew's Gospel. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. For anxiety about tomorrow is futile. 
It is not within our power to add one day, one hour, really one minute to our lives. The future for which so many people take such great pains to prepare is really not in our hands. It belongs to someone else, namely our Heavenly Father. And the Gospel text reminds us that our life depends on another, namely our God. And the only way to a certain tomorrow is to trust him wholeheartedly and unreservedly today. And so as we think of the life of Don, he certainly lived with that strong element of trust. He said he was not afraid, wasn't afraid of anything or anybody. He trusted God. Many times in that trust in God, he led in prayer at family gatherings and at auction associations. And his prayers weren't fancy or formal. They were just prayers. He just came before God and talked to him as though God were a good friend, very much on that level. And trusting God, he lived. He lived his life. He wrote his legacy. He raised his family. He influenced his community. Trusting God, you remember him living with that cowboy hat and that sling microphone that carried a max of maybe 10 yards, remembering his work gloves and the sledgehammer with the cut-off handles, and of course, that crinkled pack of beech nut. And that trust, he reached out. He loved others certainly loved his family, certainly loved the, his friends as testimony here today, but he also loved children. He referred to them as the little people, and they in turn referred to him as Uncle Don. Well, Don trusted God and he cared for the land. He loved the land, he loved livestock, and he knew cattle. And he liked animals. He seemed to have a special attraction and attention to them because he felt that the animals were messengers and they came to him to help him understand his faith and the way in which God was working in his life. One example comes to mind in 2019, like you shared, you were going through a difficult time and all of a sudden appeared on your lawn was this huge snapping turtle. And of course, Don had been praying, and later on he said to you, Helen, God sent us that turtle. He sent that turtle to us to show us that everything would be okay. Praise God for that. And so this trust and this connection with animals and this realism, a connection to the world itself, really reflects the gospel text because that's how Don lived. Do not worry about your life. He would say to us today, take an example from the animals. Learn from the birds, just like in Jesus' words. Look at the birds. Now we might say, what in the world can birds teach us? Birds, they're fleeting, frail little creatures. They hop around from place to place, never really settle too much. And birds aren't really ever accused of being intelligent. There's that derogatory term, bird brain. But birds, you know, they don't till the soil. They don't plant a crop. They don't collect a paycheck. And there isn't a bird in the world who has an IRA, a 401k, or a 403b. Birds aren't financiers. They've never heard of E.F. Hutton, Merrill Lynch, or Dean Witter. And birds aren't alarmed when they hear about the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, or the Dow Jones. It could all implode tomorrow. And those little birds wouldn't be bothered one bit. Maybe those little creatures, those little animals, those little messengers from God can tell us something that perhaps we supposedly educated and sophisticated humans often miss. Birds depend upon their Heavenly Father. 
Birds trust God. And so how much more will God care for us? God cares for the little things, the little people, the little children. So much more does he care for us who he created in his image. God is concerned about the frail earth and fleeting creatures of earth. How much more will he provide for our eternal well-being? God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world as the ultimate messenger from him. God himself died in our place, rose again from the dead so that all who believe in him have the gift of eternal life. God cares for and clothes the flowers. How much more will he care and clothe us in the righteousness, the forgiveness, the abundant life that he gives us in Jesus Christ? The riches of God's glory are unknown. His care is boundless, and all that he has and all that he will be awaits his children. Therefore, do not be anxious about your life. God cares. He cares about you, cares about me. God cared about Don. God cares for today and tomorrow and all eternity. Trust him. To our great and saving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be honor, glory, blessing, and praise forever and ever. Amen.
Let us now confess our faith with the church through the ages as we join our voices together in saying the Apostles' Creed. Please stand for the confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and assure in certain hope in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy. Help us, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us as you come into your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And because this is a Lutheran church, I'm going to invite you to please stand again. <laughs> Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Don. Acknowledge, we, be, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Sing together hymn number 742.